Oh, Elliot Smith, what happened to you? This is a recording of an interview in Germany. <clears throat> I think the interviewer says this was 18 months after XO came out. So that means that, um, what's next album? Figure 8 is about to come out. Is uh, Elliot Smith's last album that was produced while he was living. And then they produced one posthumously. People ask me different questions, but I don't feel like things are very changed. I mean, I, I just, I still, I do the same thing, things that I did before. I think about the same things, so. You once said, I'll never be a big rock star. Well, I said it because I, th I think that's true, but I'm not trying to avoid anything. I just, it's I very to difficult to watch him, knowing what's going to happen. I'm, not, I'm the wrong kind of person <clears throat> to be r really big and famous. I mean, he, d he did appear to be composed there, but you can tell there's a lot going on in his brain. It's difficult to watch Elliot Smith perform his songs because to me he wrote a lot of his songs out of his own range because he, to me he was a studio musician and I think he, he would have preferred to have just been that he never wanted to be popular the recorded version of the song is much better as usually is the case with actually usually always is the case with Elliot Smith he had a lot of really trying performances from what I've seen I've seen him give, just plain give up on songs, which he does to this song, too, while he's in this interview. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of Anthony Bourdain, of all people. Just someone that seems uh, really intellectual, but also really uncomfortable in the world and expressing uh, their intellectual ideas. Like, you know, Anthony Bourdain was, was pretty good in literary format, but in person... He always felt, he, he always looked like he felt out of place, like he was just the wrong person in the wrong place. Elliot Smith gives me that vibe all the time, too. Elliot Smith is worse, though. Like, I couldn't have predicted that Anthony Bourdain was going to kill himself, but with Elliot Smith, it, like, wasn't even, <laughs> it wasn't surprising at all. I mean, you, you listen to the lyrics of his songs that for years now, for years before he died, like, yeah, that, that dude... But they both had their problems with drugs and alcohol. And, uh, you know, Elliot Smith had a really awful childhood. I don't think Anthony Bourdain did. I think he actually had a really good childhood, didn't he? But then they both went on to the rebellious teen years, you know, rebellious years. And just Anthony Bourdain, the, the, the underbelly of New York restaurant scene. And uh, Elliot Smith and punk rock. And, you know, they continued their drugs and alcohol. That was him giving up on the song right there. 
I don't blame him. I mean, I, I really felt like he wrote out of his vocal range most of the time. And I, to me, some of his most successful songs were when he was able to perform within his vocal range, which wasn't that often. And that's fine, too. You know, to me, he felt like a singer-songwriter that was a studio, studio musician, and he just really came up with some great ideas in the studio. And I often feel like... Uh, you really shouldn't redo anybody else's songs unless, you know, they fully bless it and you have something new to bring to the table. There's a couple Elliot Smith songs I just feel like somebody, it's not that he didn't do them justice. I can't, he did, he did, he really did, but it just feels like somebody else with a really strong vocal range. I would love to hear somebody else do a couple of his songs. He, I mean, let's face it, his voice was pretty thin and pretty weak. And I don't know why he felt the need to write out of his range the way he did like that. We should take a quick look at some of his other songs, though. That song was Waltz number two. And I'd like to listen to Waltz number one. And both these songs are off, off of the album XO. <laughs> can you say? Uh, the music itself sounds sad and sullen, inconsolable, uh, and the lyrics themselves are just like how everything is kind of meaningless, but the songwriting ability, this ability to just put us on this carousel ride of just like indeterminate motion, it's like there's no ground, there's no place to land. And then he, um, eventually, he'll, he'll insert the ground so he can kind of feel stability again. But the song is perfectly crafted to express the emotions that he's feeling. Uh, this album is in my definitely in my top ten. I'd said before, um, Kate Kate Bush's album, one of Kate Bush's albums, was in my top ten. Uh, one of the Yes albums was in my top 10. This also is in my top 10. This album is perfectly created to describe the world that Elliot Smith inhabits. Going through every hour I used to come to make the repetition stop. What was I supposed to say?
The song is sublime. It's so perfectly crafted. Looking back on it again, you know, you know, remember when Kurt Cobain died? They were saying, "No, oh, man, there's always ha- there always has to be some kind of conspiracy theory. Like somebody broke in there and shot him." You're like, "Ah, oh, come on, Kurt Cobain shot himself. You know he did." With Elliot Smith, they never. <laughs> As far as I know, they never did say that his wounds were self-inflicted. They never determined. They never said it was suicide. But it doesn't surprise anybody, does it? Uh, You know, he stabbed himself in the heart, not once, but twice to make sure the job was done. Could somebody have broken into his house and stabbed him and then left? Sure, it's possible, but... Did anybody ever look for any other explanation? It had to have been, it had to have been suicide. He really was determined to get the job done, I suppose. I want to play another song from EXO that is also, there are so many good songs in this album. I mean, I'm just going to pick this one. It's kind of in the same vein. Here's the silhouette the face Always turned away So good. I mean, it reads like a confessional, like a nihilistic despair, hopelessness, topped off with feigned indifference, where you know that he wasn't indifferent. Uh, you know, his songs, you just can't, I can't help, you can't help but listen to them, feel them, and read them, and know he was in a bad place. <laughs> 